Joseph was from a poor family, but a very strong Christian family. And his folks set him up in business when he got out of high school with two water buffalo, <clears throat> and he milked them. So, like I said last week, I say he was in the dairy business. He said he was a cowboy, but whatever. <clears throat> he milked cows, uh, water buffalo, and that's how he survived, and his folks kind of set him up in business. But uh, as he shared, um, as he's herding the buffalo around, grazing them and milking them, all, he just longed to be a pastor. That's what he wanted to be. That's what he wanted to do. <clears throat> Couldn't afford Bible college. Went to visit a friend at a Bible college up in Mumbai, the old Bombay. It's Mumbai now. He's, that's up more north. He's more south, but it's, uh, what did you say, 24-hour train ride or something like that? <clears throat> and so, long ways away. So he was visiting a friend at a, a Bible college, and the, the president is a Baptist Bible college. The president of this Baptist Bible college walks by him and, and says, are, are you a student here? And he, no. And he's, I'm cutting the story short, but he says, um, this has never happened to me, but I just heard a voice tell me I'm supposed to give you a free education. And so he got a free bachelor's in theology degree at this Bible college, and then they liked him so much that they said, if you'll stay uh, and teach our bachelor's program, we'll give you a master's in divinity degree for free. And so then he ended up, uh, and I'll let him pick up the story there, but he ended up uh, teaching, getting his master's in divinity, and teaching at this Bible college. So I'll let you kind of take it from there, Joseph, on, uh, and then I'll, I'll jump in from time to time and add my two cents. Thank you. Um, you put that back in play. Sure. Yeah. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, we thank you, everyone, and we greet you all in the name of Jesus. Before we go to the testimony, why don't we bow down and ask Jesus to bless us? Dear Jesus, we love you, Lord. You have given the wonderful opportunity to disclose the testimony which you have given to me. I know I love you. I know that you are the Lord who love me and give me a life. Life is the ones you have given me that I have to decide to follow you, Lord. Till now, you are holding my hand. And whatever you have done in my life today, you give me the opportunity to share with our beloved brothers and sisters. If the word should not be written empty, Lord, it should bring the presence of God in their heart. Bless every one of us. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. When I was uh, in the Bible College, Baptist Bible College, so I had the opportunity to start the church. I said, if I go to heaven, God will not ask me how many degrees you are holding up. So yeah, he will ask me how much I was closer to him, how my life is with him. So, I decided I started doing the ministry because of that we established one church, Tamil church in Mumbai. And uh, my president was so excited about it. This man is different. And, uh, you know, he was so much happy with me and he did the good thing. And I finished the, a lot of stories are there, a lot of miracles God has done. And from that, from the Bible college, I decided... Within the four walls, what I am going to do here? Teaching and other things. So I have my side, there is no pastor much educated where I live, my hometown side. So they need me. So instead of staying here, I have to go back to my place and teach them and bring them to the saving knowledge of Christ. Of course, there are a lot of missions are there. I'm not saying no. There are a lot of missions are there. But the educated and uh, spiritual path, there is nobody show, shown us to our pastor. Today, uh, we had that, I will tell you later, a lot of pastors want to join. So, I decided then I told to my president and I want to go back to my place and uh, start the work and outreach. 
and they are still been reaching the villages and the you know slums and tribals and my pastor said if you go there you cannot survive joseph there is no one because you already survived here for so many years how can you go there and he said no i i i never found as a peace in me you know three months i struggled there and finally you know i got married then uh, then we decided so let's go where god calls us to go so from there i went then he hold my person hold me you will going to struggle there and you will be giving me a call again no i am not able to survive your please pastor i will come back to bible college you are going to tell that one he said i said let me see if it is a god's will and i will obey it but i feel this is the will of god who leads me who disturbs my heart to go back there and i said okay go so he told me then i came you know almost many years i was in the college once i came to my place it was become new to me and every villages i started moving i have no income there is nobody to help us and i went to my father and mother is quite old and i have passed to see in our house so quite old and uh, i went there and i sit to and talk to my dad dad uh, i am struggling lot and my pastor uh, my dad he said uh, life is struggle and you have to choose with which path you want to go as a father i beg to jesus to give you life god has give you life every day we are watching every day you are walking toward the death but you have the choice how to live you have the many ways you know he said you have the many ways but choose the life is not easy that's what my father said life is not easy whether you commit yourself to jesus till the death or you want to enjoy try to fulfill your life your desire life is wants god has give you only one life god give you so that life you choose you want to fulfill your desire or you want to fulfill your dignity or whatever the ways are there you go but one thing god called you god give you life that life you decide it is going to useful for god who give you life so he close his chapter and i so i told uh, my dad and he said you are always reminding me that god give you life god give you life and i am the one who going through the struggle he is not going through the struggle i said he is training you i said i did not see him. that's what my argument i did not see him. but he sees you oh of course he sees me but he never does it he does till now you you never able to study the college but you did it so he does he doing his part but you are not doing his part you try to go for on your own choice and you try to fulfill your own way but god is doing in you so it struggle me then i was start moving and shakina is there with me in the marriage and we have gone through a lot of trials one by one my relatives start to forget i mean uh, forsake us you know love when we were there and everybody start loving when we come without the empty hand and when we are struggling in the ministry all the relatives close friends everybody forsaken us and we are really helpless what my pres- you know the president who told me that same way we are helpless and i go to the village where the two people who are old people they will sit and i was faithful for them at least two years and serving them for two people so by the time when i am not earning the money i got the trouble and everybody in our family started questioning what you are doing you are educated you know the good english actually my english is not good hear the good english so translation so in india they made it you know you can go and work somewhere and uh, you can earn the money i decided whatever i learned actually i never know english even the alphabet also in the school i try to write the alphabet i try to copy 
Once I write the A, I forget the B. Again, I have to see either B or any other letters. You know, you, you can understand how much my mind is. I decided in my life, whatever I learn, uh, learn, that should be used for only God, not for any purpose. The life is given once to me. I should not use it for owning this life to give the enjoy life in the world rather than committing my life struggling toward the path of Jesus, choosing the path of Jesus. So I'm willing to die for that matter. So I decided, one of my friends and my, you know, uh, relatives, they said, hey man, you got the baby and you have the family, you have to work. I said, yes, I can work. I can work for Jesus, not for any other thing else. So slowly, everybody despised me. When I go there in the ministry, everybody says, you are going house to house? Yeah, that's my job. And you are not going to grow up? Mm, go to hell. That's what they, they, will, they will leave me and go. But I never give up. There was one time in the family circle, I was despised and uh, unspoken problems. I really cried and kneeled down. My father told me that you give me a life, but I do not know in the age of six month old. Today, I am not able to survive the way I like. I could not do for you, my Jesus, but I love you. I committed my life and I dedicated so many years for you. I don't want to turn back my life to the world. But I want you no matter what it is until the death. So that's what I decided. Then I said, other problems start uh, screwing me and a lot of things are, you know, disturbed. I could not, you know, stand and kneel down and pray and all the things. Then I decided, let me go and die. If I leave and committing the sin, which you do not like it, Rather, I will come to you choosing the death and I will come to you. That is not the good idea. The person who have the thought, <laughs> that is the demonic. He know? was contemplating suicide if he didn't pick that up. Yes. So I'm going to catch him up real quickly. Yeah. So he wants to leave Bible college to start churches. The president of the Bible college said, You're, you won't survive. And he goes, well, I'm called to do it. <laughs> the president said, you'll be calling me back and begging for your job back. So he goes to his village in the southern, southern India, the state of Tamil Nadu, where he's at now. And his father, who's elderly, very Christian man, says, God sees you. And Joseph says, I know he sees me, but he's not doing anything. And his father said, well, life is always easy. And he makes a decision, Joseph does, to serve God. And his friends are saying, you know English, you're educated. You, go, you could go get a job in the city and have a good living. And he's saying, I know I could, but that's not, what, that's not what Jesus put in my heart. I need to serve him. And he had one church with two people in it. <laughs> and and so, uh, so this is the struggle, <clears throat> and things, he, things aren't working out, and there's no money. And so he now gets thoughts of taking his own life. So when I went there, and before when I was there, and two years and three, uh, two years, I mailed to Pastor Mike. Uh, no, not two years. It's within one year. So I mailed him, and I did not get the response. And uh, just uh, one more uh, mail to him, and he said, "Yes, Joseph, I understand." So that is the word he used. That gives me more encouragement. And uh, another time, I called him. I think. I called him, and then it is early morning to him. That is the night for me there. So, so I left it. This is the things I left. When I went for the, you know, I want to give up my life toward the ocean, walked. This, this story goes this way. And when I went to the, give up my life, I love you, Jesus. Without you, I cannot live. If I live like this, I may go to end up with a different world which is not belongs to me, which is not uh, you are given the life for me to end up with the different thoughts, different world. So I want dedicated. I cannot do it. So I went for, you know, 
half of the way there is the bridge till a certain uh, length in the seashore in the uh, ocean uh, side up here up here yeah whatever they, that they live right on the bay of bengal yeah and so they're right on the on the ocean there so when I was walking there, I went to the end of the nega, you know, end of that bridge, and um, you know, I heard the voice saying, "Joseph, Joseph." I'm second time hearing. Once I heard that voice in the college, and second time I heard this voice, I turned my back. You are not allowing me to die, also. You are not allowing me to live, also. You know, that's what my question to Jesus. You know, I am. Why you call? I could not see you, but I can hear the voice. And you are not allowing me to come to you, but, you know, I am struggling. And that, that, that thought is totally turned. I, my heart, my mind was lighter. You know, like such a peace and relax I didn't see ever. That night with the tears and I come and kneel down. And, uh, you know, that was the time. In the around 11 o'clock in the night, and uh, you know, I uh, no, I called up Pastor Mike. There's a last chance. If you give the right person, and before that, I want to say how I mailed him. I'll tell that story in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that moment, that night, I told to Jesus, "This is my last." And um, after that, I I'm not going to do any more effort to do it. This one. You know, God knows my end up. He knows my limit, you know. Just I called him, I said, Pastor Mike, this is Pastor T.M. Joseph from India. He said, oh yeah, good, how are you? He said, I am fine. Pastor, will you come to India? Then he said, why don't you come to India, USA? I said, huh, okay, you know. That's what I said. I never expected that you will be calling me here. You know, he said, yes. Then I said, I will send you. I tell you, as soon as he sent, that is the, uh, that is the support which he had, the, you know, food. And I told my, you know, my family, I given them, see, you are expecting, this is the things. So, can I pick up the story yes, from here? Yes, go ahead, please. <clears throat> so, this is 2010-ish. We're, we're debating the date, but it's 2010-ish. And um, we, I as a pastor, we as a church, we're not looking to get involved really <laughs> anywhere other than our church. I mean, we supported missionaries through the Assemblies of God. So we, we supported missionaries and we, we knew its importance, but it wasn't like, wow, where could we like do a work in the world? <laughs> or wow, should we do something in India? That was just, it was just not on our radar and I get this email kind of out of the blue from Pastor T.M. Joseph from New Life Mission in India. Like, hi, Pastor, God, God uh, told me to contact you and uh, as my spiritual father. And, you know, things are very tough here in India, uh, starting churches. And um, anyway, just a few sentences. And I get it. And immediately I'm thinking, scam. I'm like, this is the Nigerian prince who has $10 million if I just give him my bank account, right? So I'm thinking, okay, what's his angle here? And I, because he didn't ask for my bank account, I did think it was pretty clever that he used our, the name of our church, New Life Church. I thought that was pretty clever. And I thought, okay, this guy saw we're New Life, he's New Life, oh, help us, send money. But he never, never said that. And so... And I just got to be honest with you, I like just type back, oh, I understand, which I understand how hard it is to be a pastor. I, so that part was true. The part was that I'll be praying for you, not so true. Because, right, sometimes as Christians, we do that, right? I'm, I'm trying not to say I'll pray for you unless I'm really going to pray for people. Because I, I had gotten into a bad habit of doing the Christian patronizing thing. Oh, there, 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 I'll pray for you. And then you don't. So... But I did that, all right? Okay, judge me, fine. Um, so, and so then he emails back. Oh, he's so excited. Um, hey, thank you. And I'm like, but he's, okay, where's, where's the money angle thing? 
there was part of me that just wanted to just not even engage it because I know these scam things. Like why don't even mess with them because they're going to find, they're going to needle in you some way and pretty soon you have no money in your bank account. Or they're just going to start asking for money and not leave you alone or whatever. But there was something inside me that I realize now that wouldn't let me drop it, but there was also my flesh part and, and natural wisdom that said, be careful here. And, and so it was a, a few weeks later, five o'clock in the morning, my phone rings. And it was in the fall, and it was, so it was dark at five o'clock in the morning. And when it's dark, I sleep. And, and when my phone rings in the dark, it's usually not a good thing right? It's usually not a good thing. And so immediately I'm awake. Hello? Hello, is this Pastor Mike? (laughs) This is T.M. Joseph from India. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. (laughs) I didn't say that, uh, but I'm thinking, this guy's good. I'm thinking, he's obviously worked at a call center, learned English, learned how to dial a phone in America. He got my number, and, and now he's got me. And so I kind of talked to him, like, what is, because in the morning, I'm still trying to, like, get my bearings here. And um, he said, you come to India. He did say that, but I didn't say you, I didn't say you come here till much, much later. But I said, <laughs> I don't know what I said, but, like, I'm not going to India. <laughs> and uh, I kind of, kind of blew him off, but I tried to be nice. Part of it was phony, just to be honest, but I'm trying to be nice. But something won't let me hang up, but also something won't let me fully embrace him. I was like, what's going on here? So nicety, 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 hang up, boom, go to sleep. Another week goes by, phone rings, 5 o'clock in the morning. Hello, Pastor Mike. Like, Dude, just ask for the money. I don't know. What's your, you know, where, what's your angle? Shoot straight. I mean, I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm trying to let him shoot me his scam so I can shoot it down and we'd be done. But he never does. And the more we talk, because I, you know, I've, I've had people stop by the church, both in Shoto and Fairfield, who are traveling through and they're looking for money or help. And a lot of them have learned some lingo that makes them look like Christians. So you'll have a heart for them and give them money. Um, so I've kind of recognized pretenders to a degree when they're looking for something, but I didn't recognize that in him. And, the, and that second phone call is like, he's saying things that posers don't know. He's using language that they would not know. And I'm like, hmm. So I kind of left it there. And to be honest, I, I didn't get back to him for months, months and months and months. And then, I don't know if he emailed again, and when he emailed again, the, the Lord said, pay attention here. And then we were, I, I think I called him, or emailed, I don't remember, maybe it was a call, because he, he had mentioned that there was a, a, a young lady from the USA working in, at an orphanage very close to him. Her name was Lydia, from Missouri, I think. And he mentioned that, and I said, oh, do you have Lydia's phone number? He goes, well, yes, I do. He sent me Lydia's phone number. She happened to be back in the U.S., so I called her. I said, do you know this guy named Pastor T.M. Joseph? She goes, oh, yeah. I said, well, he's been, like, calling and texting, but he's not asking for money. And, like, what's up with him? And she goes, oh, he's the real deal. No, he's, he's a very God. He's the real thing. That's all I needed to know. And so at that moment, I knew God's doing something God's putting something together, but I had no clue what it was. And, and so I, at one of our elder meetings, I just said, this, I don't know what's going on, but God is, is doing something. I think Jeremy and Steph were in that meeting. Um, they were elders. This is in, we hadn't started Fairfield yet. This was Shoto, 2010, 11. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And Joseph's like, you come to India, you come to India. It's like, <laughs> what, what would I do? And what, you know, I still don't know what we're supposed to be doing. Because he's never asking for money. He's never saying, hey, if you do this, this will help India. He just said, yeah, God put us together. I, well, now I agree, but I don't know why. And so uh, 
so I want to finish, so I'm going to pick up that story later. But I want to go back to the e email thing. Starts, so, yeah. so he's, yeah. he's, has a new baby. He's got Jerusha, who's older, and Jovita, who's just a baby. And he's living with his in-laws, which is not cool in India. It's probably not as cool in the U.S., but it's more and more happening. In India, it, it, would, say, it would say that you're kind of a failure, yeah. living with the in-laws, married with two kids. And they had some means. The dad was an engineer, so they would take care of him, but, but that's, you, that, you don't really do that in India. And so, the, and so Shakina said, baby needs milk. Here's 15 rupees. 15 rupees, one rupee, uh, one dollar is 74 rupees right now. So 15 rupees, whatever that is. It's cents, right? Here's some money for milk for the baby. Go get it. So he's going. In the meantime, a friend, moved by God, says, why don't, because he's in the death of despair. This is that suicidal time, right? I might, I want, you can just nod if I'm telling the truth. And, and, um, his friend says, why don't you, didn't use the word Google because they didn't, ha I don't know if they had Google. Go to the internet cafe and type in, in the search bar, New Life Church USA. Yeah. And go ahead. Actually, when I came, I was going through a lot of struggle. There was one of my friends, he's Daniel. He's a very, very excellent man in theology. And uh, he said, uh, Joseph, I know you are struggling over there. I know that you are really faithful and uh, godly man. Why don't you try, you decide in your mind and pray, why don't you try in emailing, by prayer you can put your the same name what you have, the new life, and type it. Which one comes for the first? Why don't you choose and keep and praying for that? If the Lord's will, Lord can put you to the right hand where he can mold you up. So why don't you try? Actually, I have no idea about uh, cyber cafe going and, you know. Cyber cafe. Yeah, cafe and, you know. That's for half an hour they charge 15 rupees. So that is a crucial moment and Shakina is having, I have only, I asked Shakina, Shakina, I need money. Because I have just, I go to the village ministry, I won't get any money from there. Rather, they will expect me because they are really worldly people and needy. And, you know, that is the people. I am not getting anything. Sometimes I used to take my bike, you know, walking and pushing the bike rather than riding the bike, you know. So it was a trial. And uh, then he called me, Daniel, and said, why don't you try Joseph? Hey, it will work. If God really loves you, this is the path he can take you to the next level. I said, then I really prayed and I said, can I get money, Shakina? She said, we have money. I cannot ask mother, only 15 rupees. I said, why don't you give me? Now, what about the milk? I said, uh, give me, let's see how it works. And I believe in God. And if he lead me to the right, we will get the things. So I went in there and I said, I can don't know. Uh, no, this was my prayer. I sit in the cave. Which one comes to the first? That I will take it. That is, I commit myself. This is the uh, church. This is the man of God. Whom you are going to hand work, to, hand work my life to them. To serve the ministry in India. I tell you, brothers and uh, sisters, just I put New Life Mission India. First came, I don't know the mountain or where it is. I know only Washington, D.C. and New York. This is the only two places I know in the America. So just it popped up and pastor picture was there, downside phone and other things. And I said, while, and I said, this is the man of God you are, you are giving my life to handwork. I said, whatever it may be, this is the first. Then from there, I, I took and I emailed him. So next I tried to put it, it is not coming out. I tried New Life Mission in India. I never seen till now, 
the uh, our our new life mission first coming in the computer that's it and so in this time 2009 10 10 our website at the church in shoto was not well maintained it was barely a website and we were new life church interestingly we had just changed our name from new song church the year before and jeremy pointed that out cuz he said you know if we if we wouldn't have changed our name we wouldn't be connected so god had his hand in that when we didn't see that so anyway um so he he take he has 15 rupees which for the milk milk money took milk money went to the cyber cafe paid in faith and our outdated website as far away from india as you can get without getting closer popped up there are probably i don't know i would guess there's 40,000 new life churches in the western hemisphere probably tens of thousands in the US just called new life not any certain denomination just new if you google new life church you're going to get thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hits boom just like that the most outdated website the furthest away from him when he types in new life pops up if that isn't god i don't know what is and god said call that guy he'll help you I was that guy. Now I'm glad I'm glad then I put my email and phone on our website. Now just so you know I don't do that. Not because I don't <laughs> cuz you get a lot other people other than Pastor Joseph contacting you if you know what I'm saying. And so but back in that day you just, you know, that's what you did or whatever. He read he read our state our our uh statement of faith. and he mentioned I read your statement of faith on your website I agree I mean what you believe we believe and and so so that's how we that's what what happened so how we got together which is so god and that's why I'm taking the time to tell this this is not a man made thing this is 100% a god made thing and so when i realized that and talked to the elders it's like Why don't we bring him here because if we if we're supposed to do something in India then he's obviously got to be the man to do it we're not going to go do it he's got to do it so we need to check him out it's we weren't as interested in his ideas as we were in him as a man is this a guy with integrity is this a guy who's filled with the holy spirit is this a guy who God's called that we're supposed to partner with that's what we want to check out Uh, and so we so we like well let's bring him let's pay for an airline ticket so i called him up say joseph i'm not coming to to india but we want to bring you will you come oh yes so we get him an airline ticket and that's a whole another story we don't have time to tell today but that fact of him getting to the us from india and was a whole another god story the enemy was doing everything he could every step of the way every stop at every airport to keep him from getting here true story uh and if if some day if if you visit with him he he can share that story with you it's amazing so he gets here gets here late at night flights too late take him to denny's he has no idea what to order <laughs> he saw nachos and thought it was rice so he got that it's like this isn't rice i don't know finally ended up eating eggs or something but anyway cuz i didn't know india culture And so um he just stayed with us at our house in Shoto and and we visited and like man this guy is a godly man good guy we had great fellowship from the very beginning and visit and you know we'd visit with the elders and it was probably 10 days into his 3 week visit and I'm like I still don't know why he's here he's been here 10 days hasn't asked for anything like what Why if like if you just say pastor would you send me $1000 a month I just like yes or no and then that's yes or no right <laughs> but he never did that and he's just talking he's telling us stories and and he's uh, talking about how difficult uh, it has been to plant churches they plant them and die many of you know this but in India which is mostly Hindu they greatly persecute the Christians and that persecution has ramped up exponentially it's just in the last few years but it's always been there and in india 
when you become a Christian, okay, let me back up. In India, they give every citizen an amount of rice. Every family gets uh, a month worth of rice and free education and free health care. The moment you become a Christian and they know it, you lose all that. Food gets cut off. I mean, you can go buy it if you can afford it, but everybody else gets their rice for free from the government. You lose that. So it's basically you, you lose your meal ticket. You now, if you want to send your kids to school, you now have to pay tuition. And if you need health care, you have to pay for that. And so it puts the, the Christians at an extreme economic disadvantage, and that's purposeful in India. And so that's why it's so hard, because maybe people that go to a church can kind of go under the radar if they're a church attender uh, and, and a Christian. But when you're a pastor, that's pretty public. And so the pastors were losing their economic viability by becoming a pastor. And that's what, that's what the problem was. And so I'm, over these days, I'm learning this. Finally, about day 10, you know, I'm like, okay, I, I understand the problem. The pastors lose the rice and all these economic benefits. They can't survive, and so they have to quit being a pastor. Okay, I get that. And I don't, know why I, didn't, I don't know why it took so many days, but finally on day 10, I'm like, so uh, how much would it cost? I mean, how much does it cost for, like, housing, like rent and food and clothing for, like, a, a family? Now, we're talking in the villages. I should back up. His ministry is to the villages of India. The big cities have lots of missions there, and there's money there. But India is mostly made up of villages. But their villages are like 5,000 people, 10,000 people. A 500-person village in India is tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny. But their villages are everywhere, 1.3 billion people in India. And so in the, in the villages, you can live... I mean, the bad part of the villages, there's almost no money for offerings. The good part is you can live very cheaply in the villages compared to the city. So I asked him, I said, how much would it cost, how much does it cost for a family to live? Food, clothing, housing, you know, very basics. And he thought, and he said, 75. And I said, and I didn't know rupees from anything. I didn't know what their money was. I said, no, I mean dollars. How many dollars would it cost for a month? And he said, 75. I said, no, like for food and clothing and housing, all of those. He said, 75. I said, no, for a whole month. He said, 75. I said, are you telling me that we could support a pastor and pay his basic living, food, clothing, housing for 75 a month? $75? He goes, yes. I'm like, we're totally doing that. I didn't know what the number was. I just assumed it would be way higher. But like 75 bucks a month to basically pay a pastor? I'm like, I'm all over that. So I called a quick emergency meeting of the elders. I don't remember what the day was, but it was a few days before Sunday. And I said, and I told them our discussion. And I said, can I go in front of the church on Sunday and tell this and ask who's in? And they're like, of course. And so we told the story and the $75, and I said, who's in? And pff, hands went up. You know, whether it was $75 a month or $5 a month, we, well, I'm not going to out her because if I get permission from her, I'll tell her. But we have a faithful giver from Shoto that gives $5 every single month and has for 11 years. And it's, it's people like that, and we have people giving $100 a month and everything in between. But, but people responded, and that first Sunday, I don't know if we had seven or nine pastors supported right off the bat, uh, that people would give over and above their tithes. Uh, and, then, and then a few months later, then a few months down there was 11, then 13, and then 19. And, and now it's, including Pastor Joseph, it's 26. Plus, we put things out on Facebook with a link. We have other people now giving... Um, and we're able to support uh, three or four more pastors out of that. Anyway, and then there's, and then, okay, I'm skipping ahead. 
there are two churches that are doing so well that we started from that they started from nothing that they're supporting three pastors. Three ch- two churches in India are now supporting three pastors. Uh, how cool is that? That's what is so we have 29 pastors who are getting now we've we've upped it to 85 a month because of inflation. We did that a few years ago. Um but out of this church ourselves we're supporting tw- 20 20 pastors, I think, plus Pastor Joseph. Yeah, including me. And then all the other people. That, but I'm talking just from this body right here. So, and we send him, uh, and it needs to be, <laughs> we've upped it a little bit, but every month we send him, him personally $1,500. Out of that, he lives, maintains a car and fuel. Fuel is about eight bucks a gallon there now. Um, and, and, and ministers out of that. So he doesn't live on, he lives on a very small portion of that, but that's what he uses administratively. And then we've been sending 1600 a month uh, for the pastor support. So that's 3100 a month. We've been sending every month from this little rural church in Montana to India because of your faithful giving. And some of you give specifically to India, and that goes right there. Some of you uh, just give tithes and offerings, and whatever we need to take care of what we need to do there, we do. And so uh, that's how, how things are getting supported supported. And uh, when, I, when, so I went to India the, my first time, 2013, Mar- early 2013, March of 2013. And he had been here once. At that time, I think there were three, no, when we started supporting him, he had three pastors who were struggling. Yes, we had, uh, at that time, you had the oh. three pastors. Sorry. At that time, we had the three pastors and uh, other seven people are with us as a team. And uh, we are as a team. We made the team linking each other and, you know, doing the ministry. But most people struggle. Three people very badly, they are struggling, including, you know, in my uh, time. So when we started supporting, it was five supported, 11, 17, 19, or whatever. So the first time I went over there in 2013, my first visit... I think there was 11 or 13 pastors supported. Yeah. And at that time, there was some persecution, but we could travel from village to village. Um, uh, and we w- they would set up a stage with lights in the village center. And they'd ha- at, when it got dark, which is about 6 or 7 o'clock there, they're close to the equator, uh, they'd turn on the lights and blare the Christian music, India Christian music, and they'd have dancers. It was quite a production for a village and and the village would turn out they'd come like what is going on this is cool and they so they'd have the christian dance and the music and then i would come preach a very simple gospel message that he would translate most of them have never heard about jesus they're like what's jesus where do you buy that at they're thinking like a little statue because that's their gods and i like he's a person and he's alive and he he died for you to forgive your sins and pay for your sins, but he rose again and he lives today. And he, wa- he wants you to put your faith and trust in him so that you can live with him forever in, in a perfect place. So when you die, you can go right with him. And he's alive now and he loves you and he cares for you and he wants to show you that he's real. If any of you have anything you'd like me to pray for, I'll pray for you. If you need healing, Jesus will heal you. And I would s- and they would just press in. I mean, they're very close people in India anyway. But they would just crowd in and um, hurt shoulders and backs. And the women carry, a lot of them carry bricks and water on their head. <laughs> and so they come like, my legs hurt. <laughs> my back hurts. My neck hurts. <laughs> yeah, they're carrying bricks and water on their head all day. They're compressing things. So we pray for that. We had one guy... And I just want, you can give credence to this because you saw it. Come up with his crutches and a broken leg, dangling. The shin, well, I don't know what that bone is. Broken, dangling, green and blue and yucky. It hadn't broke through the skin yet. 
And uh, it's an eight-hour bus ride to the nearest hospital. And so he comes up for prayer. And normally I'd be like, uh, I don't know about, <laughs> can I do this one? Normally, but I would, because of that energy uh, that was there, I was so like, oh, yeah. And I just put my hand and said, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing to this bone. It's completely healed. And that's, completely it healed. popped right back into place. Yeah. I'm telling you, if I had not seen that with my own eyes, I'm like, I, so if you don't believe me, I hear you. I don't know if I would have believed you if you'd have told me the same thing. I'm just telling you, it happened. Yeah. And Rock Perkins was there to see it. He saw it, and he runs around dancing. Of course, then now we're there all night, because now, like, whoa, I'll take some of that. <laughs> A lady comes up to me, and so they're just pressing in. And Joseph is my translator. They'd come up, and, you know, they'd press right in and, and crowding in. And, and so I'd say, what's their problem? And he'd, he'd ask, and they'd tell him, and then I'd pray for it. And he'd, he'd say what I was praying. And, and so this one gal presses right in, and I'm not hearing, so I get right up in her face, and she's in my face. And I say, what is her problem? And he asks, he goes, uh, she has the typhoid. <laughs> <laughs> and because I didn't know, I was a naive country bumpkin, I got no shots before I went to India. Tetanus was the only one I got. Because you had to get them, like, I don't know, two months ahead. By the time I thought about it, like, hey, I think I need a typhoid shot. Like, too late, sorry. <laughs> and so I just, when I went, I was like, Lord, in your word, you say you protect us from poison and snakes as we're doing your work. Paul said that. or Actually, Jesus said that in Mark 16. Like, I, so I believe that, so I need your protection. And he did. And when we went into to lakes that were not sanitary and baptized people and we didn't get sick, we did so many things. But here's what I, and then I'm going to let Pastor Joseph talk here in a minute. I'm not going to tell this, all these stories, but this is, this is, you need to know this. So miracle after, I mean, so many miracles. Okay, one more, and then I'm going to go on with the story, because this is really cool. If you don't know in this church, we believe the Bible in its entirety, and the New Testament talks about the gifts of the Spirit that are supernatural, specifically in 1 Corinthians 12, that God, God can, like the prophetic gift, a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of faith, word of healing, tongues, interpretation of tongues. That's for today, and there's a purpose for those. And we're, when the Holy Spirit moves on us to deliver those gifts, we should deliver them, right? So that we believe that. And so... Uh, the last night of our first visit, so the last night of open air things. So Rock started praying for people, Rock Perkins, and Joseph, we got split up. So I don't have my translator, and people are pressed in. I'm like, Joseph's way over there, and the music's blaring, and there's people like, and this guy comes up to me. I think he was not as old as he looked, but he had a lot of miles, but probably not as old as me. Um, and he's just pouring his heart out to me, and they speak the Tamil language, which is a very ancient language. I don't, I know Nandri, thank you, and Sotram, praise the Lord. I know those two things, that's it. And he's just, he's just taught, he's imploring me, and I'm looking like, are you limping? <laughs> you know, like, right, I'm trying to look if there's something physical, but I can't see it, and Joseph is way over there, and he's just, he's just so passionate about, it, you know, what he, this. and I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to think, dude, I don't, know, I don't know what to do. And so I put my hand on his shoulder, and I just started praying, like, oh, Lord, I don't know what he wants, but you know what he wants. And if you could help him, Lord, that'd be awesome. And then I got to thinking, now, wait. I can, I can pray in what the Bible calls unknown languages. I can pray in a, in a heavenly language that the Holy Spirit is actually the one that's praying. It's, it's, it's biblical, and we, we teach on that. And if you don't know about that, we'll teach more on that. And, or you can ask me about it, but it's biblical. So I just began praying in tongues, language I don't know. And I just started speaking a language I don't know. And I don't know what I'm speaking, but it's like the Holy Spirit knows. This guy doesn't know that I'm not speaking English, so he's not, like, weirded out. So I'm just going to do that. And so I just started praying in tongues. And I probably did it for three minutes. And he, he settled way down. 
and he started to look at me like this, and I didn't even think anything of it, really. And he thanked me. He was all thankful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And he walked away. So we go home, get packed the next day, and we leave like at 2 o'clock in the morning from India. And so we get back, and then there's two days of like, uh, what day is it when you get back? Well, Joseph calls me. Uh, we Skype. Oh, and that's Zoom. We used to Skype. We Zoom now. And he says, man, you know that, uh, that guy that you were praying for, it, um, he, he went home and did everything you told him to do, and his, his, he's got a restored relationship with his son. His family got saved. Thank you so much. I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't talk to anybody. He goes, that guy on the last night, you were over there. I said, Joseph, you were, weren't with me. I was, I was, I was praying in tongues. I spoke his language. I didn't know it. And a, I told him, I didn't tell him, God told him, using my voice, what he was to do to restore relationship with his son and bring his family to salvation. Am I telling the true story? And I'm like, whoa, whoa. What I'm trying to say, there were so many supernatural things that happened there that should happen here and do happen here, all right? But just there, it's very in your face because it's, um, and when people see that, they're like, uh, yeah, we don't need gods that are rocks. We need that God. We need the God who does stuff, who's alive and who cares for us. And that, so, so the, that first visit, there was 11-ish, 12, 13 pastors that followed us all around. And they're mostly just watching. They're like, right? They're not out, I mean, I'm not saying they didn't pray, but they weren't doing what I did. They're just like watching. And so then three years later, I took a group back, and um, because I had a group, it was a little different, and it was fine, it was awesome. Didn't get to be with the people as much. Went back, uh, the third time I went back was December of 2019, so right, right before COVID, actually. And um, so as I was leaving, people said, oh, I'm so excited to hear what God's going to do through you, you know, when you pray for people. and what's gonna, you're gonna, I'm excited for the stories you're going to bring back. I'm like, oh, okay, nice. Go to India, and now there's, I don't know, 19 pastors or 20 at that time. I forget what there was. And... Like, I think I prayed for one person. I actually prayed for an like, eight-year-old boy who was mute, couldn't talk. Prayed for him, he didn't talk. He'd never talked in his life. I prayed for him, he didn't talk. Until he got home. Then he started talking. Yeah. So that was cool. But other than that, like, and here's why. Because the pastors were doing what I had already done. Now they were praying for people. They were seeing people... Actually, two, I think two raised from the dead, yes. uh, healed from cancer. I mean, those supernatural things, and they're operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Those pastors are doing it, and they just had to see it, and they just had to be mentored by him. And once they saw it and got it and see it's in the Word of God and the power of God and see how that impacts people, like, oh, we're all over that. And so I don't know if you want to, we need to end up here fairly soon, but if you want to just dovetail in on that a little bit. Have, has what I said been true? Yes. Okay, yes. I want to make sure that. <laughs> there are first time when they visited with Pastor Rock. Uh, I know we call him Pastor, but uh, I don't know here is Pastor Rock. Rock, Rock. Yeah. yeah. So he came there and they have done a lot of minis, uh, mission work, a lot of miracles was happened. Then we, we, I realized there is the divine relations God has given to me what my purpose was before. And when we connected, that is not uh, our own way. We decided, we, you know, intentionally we have not done. It is God who united us, you know, for his purpose. And, uh, you know, a lot of miracles was there. And from there, we have developed the churches. And, uh, you know, I have to thank uh, elders and pastor and church members for trusting us, you know. <laughs> and uh, today we have come up to that level. Yeah. So, we're going to continue the conversation next week. We might tell a, a couple more stories, but we're going to talk more about, okay, what, what, 
what do we feel like the Lord wants done in the next months and year? And we're going to hear more about that and more stories as things come up. But I guess I want to put out the same challenge to you or the same opportunity. I, let's not call it a challenge. Let's call it an opportunity to you as I did to that group of people 11 years ago. And you don't have to raise your hand, but we can support and we are supporting pastors paying their living basically for $85 a month. And so the challenge today is the same as, as then, is who's in? Who's in? You don't have to raise your hand. Uh, the faithfulness of $5 a month counts. The, the people who give 85 a month really adds up fast. The few people that give 100 a month adds up fast. 15 a month is amazing. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And so if, if, if you want to be a part of that, we encourage you to do that. In your bulletin is a QR code. Uh, and if you click that, that'll take you right to the giving site through this church. All right, so there's newlifeindia.org, which is kind of the, the, the um, website for everybody else out there. But for our church, if you just, on our website, uh, you can go and there's a New Life India link and you can give through our church straight to India. And so when you hit that QR code, that'll take you to that place. And I think there's a drop down of purpose for India pastor support, India church construction, which we'll talk more about next week. We've got some interesting projects that you're going to want to hear about next week. Uh, and then special projects, like when we do VBS. We'll talk next week about VBS and, and give you an update because we were expecting thousands of students. And, I, and that's going on right now. So we'll have a vacation Bible school update for you next week and some pictures. And uh, Jerusha has made a video. She's working on a video, so she's going to share that uh, with us next week. But, but the, the opportunity laid before you today is, um, are you in? Are you in on this deal? And if, if, you, if you can't afford it, uh, we understand. Or if it's, God's not laying in your heart, don't feel obligated. But I'm telling you, if, you, if you're looking for something that bears fruit, <laughs> if you're looking for bang for the buck, this is totally it. And so we just want to uh, encourage you to, to think about that. And you, a one-time gift is fine, but, but really it's really helpful when you have a reoccurring gift. Like every month we can just kind of count on it because then we know that we can send it in faith and knowing that it's, it's going to get covered. Are you good? Why don't you um, stand up? Worship team is here. Come on out, worship team. We're going to close in worship. And as we do that, I just want to, I guess, maybe personalize it for a few of you. Because a lot of you are like, wow, God has really worked in Joseph's life. God has really made a way for him. And you might be thinking, well, because he's a pastor and, you know, he's doing all the pastor stuff. So surely God's going to make a way. I'm telling you, God is just as interested in your life, you not being a pastor, and how that turns out as his life being a pastor. All right, there's no difference in, in how passionate God is about that. He's not more passionate about what he does in Joseph's life than he is about what he does in your life. That's truth, and I want you to know that and hear that. Because I think a lot of you can just say, well, of course, him, but me, maybe not so much. No, so much. And so maybe some of you are, today might be in that place where Joseph was, where like, I know what I want to do should be doing. It's just not working out. And I'm, 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 des I'm, I'm disappointed, I'm desperate, I'm disillusioned, I, I, I'm sad, I feel, I feel like hope has been cut off. I'm just telling you, hope is not cut off. The Lord is making a way for you. The thing that, why it made a difference in Joseph, because he said, even though I can't see you, I know you see me. And that's the message for you today. Even though you might not see Jesus at work, he sees you. He's at work. He's making a way. Prayer people, come on up. So we have prayer people up here as we close this morning. And again, are you okay to pray with people down there? So Pastor Joseph's going to step right down there. And if you want him to pray for you, and um, our prayer people do a great job, but Joseph is here. And, and I'll tell you, when, when Joseph prays for you, you've been prayed for. <laughs> And uh, so if you want to come up and have him pray for, your, uh, pray for you as we close this morning in worship, feel, feel free to do that.